Hey guys, my name's Cassie, and thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you will enjoy this series. As you can probably tell from the title, this is going to be a, a series, kind of like a DIY um, tutorial showing you how to make a traveler's notebook to commemorate something that's really important in your life. For me, this is my favorite band, My Chemical Romance, and I wanted to... I know I don't normally show my face a lot on this channel, but I wanted to kind of um, give you a more personal backstory as to why this band is so important to me, um, how I came up with this idea, why I'm doing it in this format, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, if that's something you guys are interested in, keep watching. MCR has been my favorite band since I was 12 years old. I am now 27, coming up on 28. So for a large chunk of my life, this band has been there for me. Um, and I have a, you know, everybody pretty much has a story. Anyone who has a favorite band, a favorite, you know, movie, a favorite video game, um, even just a favorite song, um, a favorite TV show, favorite comic, um, Everyone kind of has a story, usually, of, you know, why that is so important to them. And it may simply be, you know, hey, I really like this band because I like the way they sound. And that's perfectly valid and okay. And yes, that's true. I do love My Chem's music, and I love all of their music and all of their eras and all the different sounds that they, you know, came up with and all the things that they've done. Um over the years and the fact that they are not broken up anymore is still something I have not fully accepted, I guess. Like it hasn't like registered in my mind, even though I've watched, you know, smartphone videos from that return show on YouTube hundreds of times, I still can't believe this is real because I was so convinced that that was it. It was over. Um, but I did kind of want to, uh, share with you all a brief history because it, this video would be hours long if I gave the entire thing. Just a brief history of, you know, how I discovered the band, uh, why the band is so important to me, um, you know, what era the band was in when I became a fan, where I'm at now, all those sorts of things. So I'm just going to start at the beginning, I guess. So I'd rather not go into um, specifics here on the internet. Uh, those who are close to me know this. Um, but I discovered my chem during a very traumatic time in my life. Um, I was 12 years old. It was my 12th birthday. I don't know that 100% for a fact that it was on my actual birthday when I discovered them. I know it was during that week, at least. To my memory... And again, when you go through something traumatic, it, your memory, you know, sometimes it's not 100% accurate, but it doesn't really matter. Something traumatic happened on my 12th birthday. Um, I lost a family member, and it is something that will always, you know, always affect me for the rest of my life. Um, but I discovered my chem, again, to my knowledge, to my memory, on that day. And my memory is that I went to a friend's house because my parents were dealing with some stuff related to the event that happened, um, the family member who passed away. And I went to my best friend's house. Her name is Chelsea. And Chelsea, if you ever watch this, I doubt you will, but if you ever watch this, um, just know I love you. And I know we haven't really talked in years, but um, you always have a very special place in my heart and I love you. And the memories I have growing up and being at your house and decorating for Christmas and, you know, playing Donkey Konga and all those things are um, very, very special. So just shout out to Chelsea. Whew. So anyway, I was at my best friend Chelsea's house. And um, basically at that point, I wasn't sure if 
uh, this family member had actually passed away or um, if they were, you know, just at the hospital. I, I didn't really know what was going on. So I basically just went to my friend's house and just tried to have a normal rest of my day, pretty much. And I remember being in her kitchen. This house was so beautiful, by the way. I remember being in her kitchen and behind me was her living room. And I remember they had green carpet. And they had, they were like the first uh, people I knew who had like a big screen TV. So like it wasn't uh, an HD TV. <laughs> this is back in the day, 2005. Um, so they had like a large TV and it just blew my mind because I still had like a tube TV. And I remember hearing while I was sitting in the kitchen um, what I later found out was Helena by MCR. And I remember hearing it and hearing the lyrics and hearing the guitar and the vocals and be like, I remember just so vividly thinking like, I have never heard anything like this before. And I turned around and it was the Helena music video. And... I will never be able to put this into words, but the feeling that I got when I heard the lyrics in that song, when my, when someone very close to me had just passed, I, I remember I got a phone call from my mom that yes, they had passed away. And hearing those lyrics and seeing that music video in a church, it was a funeral, it was black, it was dark, it was, it was black and it was dark and it was sad, but it was also hopeful. And I will just never be able to put into words how profound of an impact that song and that video had on me. And that is why it will always be for the rest of my life, my favorite song of all time. Not my favorite Mike Kim song, just my favorite song. Not only, you know, were the lyrics so timely, you know, with, with what was going on in my life, um, the song and the way that it just sounded, just sonically, just those guitars and the bass and the, just the whole thing. It was so beautiful and I had just never heard anything like that. And prior to this point, my favorite band was Green Day. So I had, you know, I had gotten into, um, you know, rock music and punk rock. Cause prior to that, you know, when I was a kid, it was really just like pop music, Aaron Carter, Backstreet Boys, whatever. Um, I wasn't really into like real music. If that makes sense. Green Day will always have a very special place in my heart because they were my favorite band, my first favorite band. And um, I discovered them when American Idiot came out in 2004. And that album, um, American Idiot, is a very special album to me. And so once I got into Green Day through American Idiot, I remember, you know, going backwards and listening to all their albums that came out prior to that and just really falling in love with it. Um so Green Day really opened me up to all different types of punk music and rock music. And weirdly enough, and I know I'm not alone in this, um, the Tony Hawk video games got me into a lot of bands. Um, Rise Against was one that I discovered through uh, the Tony Hawk games. And also like Need for Speed Underground 2 had... Um, had Rise Against on it. I remember uh, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland had Alkaline Trio on it. Um, Alkaline Trio is one of my top favorite bands to this day. So was Rise Against. And so I was familiar with bands kind of in this genre. So, you know, at this point, you know, prior to hearing Helena on this day, 
Green Day was my favorite band. And I had heard Green Day. I heard Rise Against. I heard Alkaline Trio. I loved these bands a lot. But I had never heard anything like My Chem. And it just really struck me because it was so different. And I just identified with these lyrics so strongly. And um, I knew at that moment that something changed and something clicked and that this was going to affect my life. Uh, didn't realize, you know, really how long it would affect my life. I never thought that I'd be sitting here at 27, you know, the fact that I can sit here and say that I've met Frank and I've met Gerard and I have, you know, autographs from them. Um, I just never, never in a million years. But that was my introduction to my chem. Basically, the, uh, the gist of that is the, uh, I joined the fandom in, uh, during Revenge Era, kind of when my chem was really getting popular. Um, that video was on VH1, I remember very specifically. Um, and from that point on, um, the rest is history. I heard, obviously, I'm not okay. It was a huge hit. Uh, then I went back, listened to Bullets, absolutely fell in complete love with that album. Um, and the following year, as you know, uh, the Black Parade, which I have obviously all behind me here. Um, the Black Parade came out a year after I became a fan of the band. So I am so thankful that I got to experience the, you know, live in real time, like the hype surrounding, you know, the Black Parade coming out and being able to, you know, talk to people about the band and put up flyers and buy the t-shirts and, and find articles and videos online and just get like every little ounce of information I could about this upcoming album. And I was on I'm not okay.net shout out to those people who ran that forum. I met one of my closest friends on that website when we were kids. Um, and now we're, we're still, we're still big Mike M fans. Um, but you know, being able to experience that and, to have that as a distraction for me to, you know, have something to look forward to um, when my life was in such a bad place. You know, it's hard enough being 12 and 13 years old when things are good. Um, but when you, you know, lose someone close to you in a traumatic way, it's um, just makes things, you know, that much worse. So um, having the Black Parade to look forward to was really important to me. And when um, the Black Parade finally came out on October 24, 2006, I celebrate on that day every year because I just, I remember that day very vividly. Um, I was so excited. Like, I'm so excited. Um, you know, to be able to pick up Mike Kem's new record the day that it came out. Um, that was really freaking cool. And, you know, at that time I was 13. And it was, you know, over a year since um, I had lost that family member. And I was really trying to, uh, you know, pick up my life and kind of have some sense of normalcy and kind of try to move on and, um, and when the lead single from the Black Parade, Welcome to the Black Parade, leaked online, because I heard it when the album, um, or when the single leaked, like before it was supposed to come out, when I heard that, and I heard the lyrics, and though you're dead and gone, believe me, your memory will carry on. I just felt <laughs> like I cannot believe that this is happening. 
I, it was just, it was just what I needed. It was exactly, you know, it fell in line with exactly where I was in my life. I was so just thankful to have this band and to have a band leader like Gerard, um, who was so vocal about mental health and about, you know, telling the fans, you know, it's okay to be messed up because there's five dudes who are just as messed up as you are. Um, that was really important to me and a lot, a lot of people. And I'm so glad that they were able to reach as many people as they did. Um, and I know, I'm, I'm sure they know, but I don't think they'll ever really know the impact that they've had and continue to have as a band. Um, it's really quite incredible. But when the Black Prairie came out, um, I was just blown away. And yes, it was very different from Bullets and Revenge. But at this point, I knew, you know, I knew that Bullets and Revenge sounded so different. And I really liked that. I liked that this band was like, their albums were all so different from one another. I thought that was really cool. And so when Black Prairie came out, it was the same thing. It was like, okay, reinvention of the band again. And it's a new era. And, you know, Revenge era is over. And now we're in Black Parade era. And um, it was a really cool time. Um, being able to be there and be a part of that. And the only regret that I have is that I was too young to be able to go to the shows like I would have liked to. Um, I almost saw them on the, you know, the first like Black Parade tour. Um, but there was a snowstorm and my parents did not want to drive through the snowstorm to get to the show. It was a shame that I couldn't go, but I was able to see them on the Black Parade World Tour, which is the last tour um, that they did, you know, in support of that record. And it was on May 7th, 2008. And uh, in Philadelphia at the Electric Factory, RIP. And it was actually a two night show. And I only went to the one night because again, I was like 14 years old. I had to have someone drive me. It was actually one of my close friends. His name's Dylan. Dylan, if you ever watch this, um, I know we don't really talk anymore. Just we've just like grown up and grown apart or whatever. But um, I do want you to know that you getting me that ticket to go see them, um, I could not be more grateful because. To this day, it's the only time I've seen them live in concert, and that show was magical, and uh, I only wish I had video. I just have one little clip, because it was 2008, and we didn't have smartphones, and cameras weren't allowed. I have one 30-second clip of Desert Song. it but I am very I'm very grateful to have gone to that show and it was um it was friggin awesome and I actually met Frank after the show and that was really really important to me especially at that point in my life and I remember him saying like I'm you know I hope that we inspire you and I, I just kept telling thank you thank you thank you so much and um it was a really great night and I'll never forget it for the rest of my life this is going to be so fucking long. I'm going to have to cut this big time. I just kind of want to catch you up to where we are at this point. So Black Parade comes out in 06. Um, Black Parade is Dead comes out in 08, which I also got on day one. And um, just an incredible, incredible live performance. They played the whole record. And then the show from Jersey. Anyway, so at this point, you know... I am still in high school. I graduated high school in 2011. Okay, I'm going to keep this part kind of short because there's really not too much to say. 
But obviously, you know, Black Parade came out in 2006. Black Parade is Dead came out in 2008. I got that when it, uh, the day it came out, my mom took me after school to go pick it up. And uh, really, really great live performances. Um, we all we all know that. In 2010, in November of 2010, when I was a sophomore in high school, um, no, a junior. I was a junior in high school. Junior in high school. Danger Days came out. And I've never admitted this out loud. I have written it down before. Um, and I've, I've told my husband and people close to me. But I've never admitted, like, on the internet. Um, I really didn't like Danger Days when it came out. And I really feel bad about that now uh, because I love that record. But when it came out, when I first heard it, I hated Danger Days. I'm sorry. I felt like I couldn't be a good fan anymore because I didn't like this album they put out. And then I thought, like, well, if I don't like this album, I can't say they're my favorite band anymore and I was having like this crisis it was it was really traumatic okay and I tried periodically I would go back I would listen to it again and I would just I just didn't like it I wasn't ready I wasn't ready for bright colors I wasn't ready to move on from Black Parade even though it had been years um because of what had happened in my life and then going up through high school and still dealing with, you know, the repercussions of the trauma I experienced at 12. Um, I just wasn't ready for danger days. I wasn't ready to be happy. Um, and I think that's why I couldn't really identify with that record and that sound. And I just wasn't, I didn't like it. I, I wasn't vibing with it. I, I really struggled. Um, I still, listened to my chem obviously I absolutely love their first three records I you know still thought of them as my favorite band um, but I didn't say it out loud because I felt ashamed I felt like a fake fan because I you know how, how are you going to go to a concert <laughs> where they're you know supporting danger days and you don't like danger days like you're you're fake you know and that's how I felt and so I did not see them in concert again I could have but I didn't. I had no interest. I didn't want to because I felt like a terrible fan. And it wasn't until 2012, on a random day at work, I had a um, paid internship. It was an office job in a cubicle. And uh, I used to uh, listen to YouTube while I worked. I would have YouTube up in the background and I would have my work just kind of going, it would just kind of be like background noise or whatever, um, with headphones, obviously. And one day, you know how YouTube just like auto plays, I was listening to, you know, some My Chem song, who knows, probably Thank You for the Venom or something. And something came up on autoplay and it was, uh, it was Nana, but it was a live version in a like a studio, like a radio show thing where they do those live performances or whatever. And it came on and I'm listening to it and I'm kind of like bopping my head and I'm kind of vibing and I'm like, wait, do I like this? So then the song finishes and then the only hope for me is you comes on same day live performance in a radio studio and I really liked that song and then I went down the rabbit hole and then the guilt set in and then I was pissed at myself I was like you have got to be kidding me I cannot believe that I have spent the past two years missing out on shows hating this album I've spent all this time hating this album now I like it, and now I feel stupid. 
so at that point, I became obsessed again. I openly admitted they're my favorite band. You know, I didn't have this guilt anymore of, like, not liking the record. The guilt I had was toward myself for not liking it for two years and missing out on the hype of the record coming out and everything. Like, I just... And I'm, I'm sorry. But you know what I will say? Is that I think it's really cool that they... And I know Frank has touched on this in interviews before. But by them having this completely new sound that, yes, you know, Bullets Revenge Parade are all very different um, in the way that they sound. But like Danger Days is like, whoa, like out there. By doing that, it really, you know, it took me a little time. Um, but it opened my mind and, and opened me up to... Um, really, you know, listening to new types of music and um, not just sticking to what I knew and what I thought I liked. And yet, like I said, it took me a little time. I didn't, I didn't like it at first. Um, but ultimately, you know, that album really opened my mind a lot. And I'm very, you know, I think that's really cool. I think it's cool when a band can, uh, you know, open your mind and your heart and your ears and everything to a new sound that maybe you never would have explored before. And the same thing happened when Gerard went solo and uh, when Frank went solo and when Ray went solo, particularly Gerard with Hesitant Alien, like that's not the type of music I would normally, um, you know, seek out. But I loved that record, like from the jump, like from the day it came out, I loved it. As far as the breakup, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here all day and talk about how devastating it was and how I felt lost and, and all this stuff because it would take all day and it's kind of self-explanatory. My favorite band broke up. I was really upset. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know what else there's to say, uh, about that. And I could go in depth, um, you know, if you're a fan of the band to talk about this, um, more in depth, if you're interested, I can make a video, let me know in the comments. Um, but I don't want to bore you to death and see her all day and talk about how upset I was that my favorite band broke up. And at that point it was like, who's my favorite band now? And what do I do? And I can't believe this and I'm heartbroken and everything else. So I'm just gonna fast forward here to um, Halloween 2019, which we all know, uh, if you're a fan of the band or if you even know anyone who's a fan of the band, um, that was the day that my chem broke the internet and <laughs> the internet blew up. I lost my mind. I was at work and I jumped up out of my seat. I started crying. I ran, I like made a beeline out the back door. I was like sobbing. Um, my coworkers thought someone died. I was like, no, it's, it's good. I'll tell you later. It's a good thing. I just need to process. And then I made this video here. MCR just announced a reunion show. It's in LA on December 20th and I'm going. I am numb. My legs, I can't feel my legs. I, I'm not exaggerating. They're doing a reunion show. As you kind of saw me joking there, um, I did not go to the Shrine show in December of 2019. I was there in spirit. I really would have loved to be there. Um, but tickets were impossible to get, and I tried, and that's it. Um, thank God for people who recorded that and put it on YouTube. So where we are today as of um, October 2020 is um, My Chem is still my favorite band. I am a grown-ass adult now. I am 27. And I was supposed to see them last month in Jersey. But yeah. They did reschedule all those shows for next year, so fingers crossed that the world will still be intact 
next year because things seem kind of bleak right now. But if all goes well, then I will be seeing them next year in September. I'm still hoping to get tickets to Philly. I tried really hard and I just, I couldn't. Philly is like an hour and a half for me. I really want to see them in Philly, um, especially because that's where I saw them at the one show I've been to, you know, in May 2008. So still holding out hope to get a ticket for that Philly show. But um, that's pretty much where we're at. And so at this point, I'm going to kind of jump into um, why I decided to create this Traveler's Notebook um, and use, you know, that medium to, you know, do this project. Um, for years and years, I've wanted something, something tangible where I could write down all these things I just shared with you. My history of how I discovered the band, why they're so important to me, my favorite lyrics, the things that got me through, um, the songs that I just love the way they sound. My favorite, you know, Ray Toro and, and Frank Iero are two of my favorite guitarists. And not just because they're in my favorite band, but they're just really good guitarists and they play from the heart. And I, I just, I want to express all these things and write down, you know, my memories and, and do photos and things. And I've tried for so many years um, through, you know, different like blogs and things online. Like I would write you know, I had like a Tumblr at one point. I don't even know the login anymore. And I wanted to have something where it was all in one place. Something I could come back to, look at, read, that would make me happy. Um, and that I could share with those close to me who maybe don't quite understand why <laughs> this band is so important to me and why I love them so much. Um, and since I have gotten into... Traveler's Notebooks. Um, well, first I got into memory keeping. And then I discovered the, you know, Traveler's Notebook method with the elastics and the inserts and everything. And I just, I love everything about it. Um, shout out to Shan at the Honeybee Shop because she is the one who I saw. It was just an innocuous Instagram story where she posted a silent flip through of her B6 Traveler's Notebook. And I saw it and I'm like, I love everything about that. I want, I want that. I want one of those. So I bought the um, gray B16 cover from her website, honeybeeshop.com. Check it out. It's fantastic. Um, so I bought that with the intention of, you know, I wanted to use it as, I wanted to have an insert for mood tracking. I think it's very important Um to track your moods, to help with your mental health. And I could look at a month, you know, when the month's over and see that, you know, if I had a bunch of days where I was depressed, maybe I need to, um, you know, kind of reassess, see what was causing that, talk to my therapist about that, talk to my doctor. Do I need to up my uh, dosage on my antidepressant? Um, or if I have a bunch of days where I'm happy and I have almost no depressed days, you know, what was the difference there? Um, was it around my menstrual cycle? Like all these things. So I think it's really important to track your moods. So I wanted to do a mood tracking insert, a memory keeping insert, because I haven't kept up with my memory keeping because the memory keeping book that I have is just so like large and just kind of clunky and I'm just not like totally in love with it. So I wanted something smaller that was more portable. Um, and I also wanted to do uh, journaling in the traveler's notebook and then also just have like a like a brain dump insert and really just use it to be creative and and make die cuts and make my own stickers and and buy die cuts and stickers from my favorite shops and support them and just have this book that when I hold it and I open up and look at it it just makes me feel calm it makes me happy and that's what my b6 tn is so when I had that and I realized, like, okay, I really like this method. Well, then I started scouring the internet for all different shops, trying to find the perfect B6TN cover. Because I wanted a separate one to house inserts that were all about my chem. And I wanted this one book. It was just one place where I could have everything. I could have, you know 
I could write all my, you know, my history of you know, discovering the band. And like I said, you know, my favorite lyrics and things like that. Pictures from over the years. Um, and I just thought that, you know, the B6TN would be a great way to do that. It's a really good size. And then Shan just so happened to come out with a black B6TN cover. And I really had had in my head, I envisioned it being black. I just wanted it to be neutral. I didn't want, you know, any kind of patterns or anything on the cover. I just wanted a black cover. And then um, I wanted to, you know, kind of create my own inserts, um, create my own dashboards, create covers, and just really have this be like a therapeutic way for me to, you know, be creative and also document my um, my love of this band that means so much to me and is something that, you know, I will have hopefully for the rest of my life. Hopefully nothing happens to it. Um, and then also, you know, if my, um, my nieces or my nephew end up getting into the band, if I have kids one day that end up getting into the band, um, it would be something I can share with them and say, you know, look, here's what, you know, back in my day, you know, so uh, I'm really excited about this. It has, um, it's been a really tough year, obviously. Um, this year has been hard and I'm very blessed to, um, you know, in my own little bubble, things have been okay, but, um, I'm not ignorant to what is going on in the world. It's a rough time right now. And I am constantly looking for things to not only distract me from that, but also um, just things that make me happy and that truly bring me joy. And, you know, when things are rough, like making art just really helps. No matter what you do, um, you know, you don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be able, because I used to have this thing in my head, like, oh, well, I can't write songs. I can't play guitar and I can't paint and I can't draw and all this stuff. So I can't be creative and I can't be an artist um, and I can't make art. And that's just not true. Anyone can make art. And, you know, who says it even has to be good? I think there's this idea um, I think the internet obviously has really <laughs> made this, uh, worse, but like, there's this idea that like, if you create something and it doesn't look great, that, that creating it was a waste of time. And that's not true at all. I have, um, painted things before that look like dog crap. Okay. Um, but the act of creating it is therapeutic and just because you think something doesn't look good doesn't mean other people won't think it looks good and I'm also a photographer um and you know that's another way to express yourself and create art writing um and thank god for planning and crafting and scrapbooking and you know that's um that's really been a great outlet for me so I hope that this series is something that um, can inspire you to, you know, maybe not even to create a traveler's notebook, but just to create something because art is the weapon. And, um, you know, I just think it's very good for us to keep creating and it's good uh, for your mental health to create as well. Um, and for me, my favorite way of expressing myself and creating things is through planning and scrapbooking and paper crafting. So I hope you guys will enjoy this. I'm so sorry that this intro was like super long, but I just really felt like I needed to explain <laughs> the importance of why I am creating this, why it's important to me. And I hope you guys will find this beneficial, entertaining, um, please share it with someone if you think that they would be interested in creating something like this. Um, it doesn't have to be about a favorite band. It can be about anything. Um, or even if you're just using a traveler's notebook for planning, um, 
for journaling, memory keeping, whatever, you know, hopefully I can teach you how you can make your own inserts if you're, you know, budget conscious or you really just want to be able to say, I created this with my own two hands. Um, because yes, you can buy inserts that are super cute and yes, you can buy dashboards and everything, but it's really cool when you learn how to make them yourself and you have something that is truly unique that no one else has anything that looks just like what you've created. So um, I hope this will help you guys out, uh, inspire you, and um, you know get you through whatever it is you're going through or kind of maybe uh, spark some creativity in you. So now that we got through that super long intro, let's get into actually making this thing. Hi, um, I know this like was a super long intro. I just wanted to add one more thing. Um, if G, Frank, Ray, Mikey, James Louise, anybody, uh, Worm, anybody ever sees this, I just want to uh, say that I am obviously so incredibly grateful for this band. And I know you guys all know how special it is, but just to like say it one more time and like reassure you um you've made a profound impact on so many people and I only hope to impact you know one person's life in the way that you've impacted millions of people um you have always inspired me and will continue to inspire me in my you know daily life to just be kind to people never judge people, um, be an advocate for mental health. And, um, you know, and also you just remind me of the power of music. And that's something that I just think I'll never really quite grasp or understand fully. I am not a musician. I played clarinet in high school and I played a little bit of bass, but I'm not a musician. I like singing, but I'm not good at it. Um, but I can appreciate music and the impact it has on the world. And uh, just wanted to briefly put that in there in case any members of the band or crew members or anything ever see this. Um, not only is your music awesome, um, it has changed and saved so many lives. And, um, you know, I was one of those people who kept saying, you know, a couple of years back, like, you know, do I want my chem to reunite? Yes, but only if they want to and only if they're happy. And it seems like you guys are happy. And I just want to say, like, seeing videos from that return show was just, I just could not stop smiling. Like, and especially, I just have to point out Ray, like, I'm, I'm just going to put a screenshot in. Like, look at him. He is so happy. And just seeing one of my favorite guitarists on stage just shredding again is just, uh, it's, it's good. It's a good feeling. And it's a shame that we, you know, uh, couldn't see more shows this year. And I'm sure you guys were bummed about that too. Um, but there's always next year. And... I just wanted to add that in and show off my Black Parade jacket that doesn't fit me. I can't zip it, uh, but I keep it as a collector's item, and it fits from, like, here up. So, you know, it's um, pretty cool. Okay, on with the video. Okay, well, um, since this ended up being 45 minutes long, I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to split this up into... Um, separate parts. So the next video will be um, a tutorial on how to make your own inserts. And for me, I used uh, black sketch paper. And uh, I hope you guys will tune in for that. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you are notified when that video goes up. Um, and there will be many more videos to come in this series. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have stuck around till the end, you are, you're a real one. So thanks for being here and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.